I almost just accidentally ordered a $5,000 bathtub. I was just browsing, getting ready to remodel a bathroom, and out of nowhere, the checkout thing came up. I was like, no, 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 no. Not what I meant to do. Add to list. That's not what's going on. It's not relevant either. Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff, how's everybody doing? I hope you're doing well. I'm great. Got some spathophyllums laid out here on the table, and I just, I thought we'd talk about them. Several weeks ago, maybe even months ago, I don't know, time's an illusion. At some point in the somewhat recent past, I was talking about one of my spathophyllums, the sensation that was variegated. I had it in the back of my fish tank. I potted it up into a floating planter, now it's over here in the pond. When I was talking about that spathophyllum, I mentioned that I've gone down a bit of a rabbit hole. A plant that used to absolutely bore me, just I never found them interesting, now I want all of them. Because there's new types now, there are more varieties, there's some things to choose from. I had always just associated your plain old spathophyllum piece lily with funerals, really. That's the only time I ever saw them. The only ones I ever had were ones that were from funerals, which isn't the best association to have, but I moved on from that. I had just a couple of regular ones laying around for maybe the past year or so that I got specifically for videos so we could talk about them, because a lot of people grow them and they're fairly easy to grow. So I would get them to talk about them in plant videos, and then after having them, my appreciation for them really skyrocketed. But here we are now, and I have some more. Not as many as I would like. There are so many different ones to choose from, but they're not that easy to find. There are some that are becoming more easy, but the ones that I would really like, I don't see them for sale anywhere. I had mentioned in that video, backing up to what I was saying with the sensation peacefully, that when I get more, I would talk about some of the varieties that I really like. So here we are, I got some more. It's really just a show and tell type video. I hadn't really planned on talking about the care with the spathophyllums. I don't know if I need to. They're pretty simple and easy to grow plants. Right in direct light, don't let them dry out for very long. Water when the top one inch of soil is dry. Sometimes chlorine and flora, flora mean, flora, that's not the word, flora means and fluoride can cause some brown tippage in them. I don't know how common that is. I think your levels have to be pretty high. Toxic to dogs and cats. It's more of one of those plants where it might make them puke because they contain calcium oxalates, which can be very upsetting to their stomachs. I think anything more severe than vomiting is fairly rare, but still keep them away from curious mouths. And for ease of care, self-watering pot. Just do it. It makes your life so much easier. They're thirsty plants. You can get away with underwatering them, but it's not going to be great for the plants in the long run, right? They want things consistently moist. That being said, luckily they are very forgiving plants. It's easy to accidentally underwater them. They are one of those plants where they tend to look totally fine and then one day they just, they look sad and thirsty. That's what happened with this one. Was hoping this one would perk up by the time I was ready to film this video. Doesn't look like that's going to happen. That's okay, you'll get the point. I'll talk about it last, maybe it'll be standing up some more by then. So the three that I have here, in addition to the two in the pond, in the pond I have a domino and a sensation. We'll get a close up of those in a bit. This one right here, this one, I just love it. This one's become one of my favorites. I'm gonna say that about all of them, probably. This one is called Platinum Mist. It has a more grayish to silvery toned foliage. I don't really know if I would say silvery, but I see that in a lot of the descriptions when you read about this one. To me, it's more of just a very light variegation. The newer foliage you can see in here opens up with more of a white, and then it fades out to this nice grayish blue tone. Variegation on this one is very consistent across all the foliage, so it's not going to be really erratic like you get with the Domino or the Picasso or the Jessica. So it's a much more calm plant to look at. That's one of the things I like about the spathophyllums. You just have a pot full of green, and when they're happy enough, they'll flower for you. That's one of the reasons we like them, right? They'll throw up their big white spath as long as they're getting enough light and proper fertilizing. This one right here hasn't flowered for me yet. I've only had it for about, I'd say a month and a half. It has been a vigorous grower. I'm glad that it was sent to me in this larger container. That's an eight inch pot that that one's in. But in that short amount of time, maybe six weeks, it has probably added about 20% more in just offshoots. There are lots and lots of little ones on the inside and there's so this is one that should be pretty prolific and easy to divide up if you want more there's a water soluble packing peanut left in there this thing when it was shipped it was just immersed in a box full of those 
peanuts. I thought I'd gotten them all out. Hasn't been fussy. This one has never wilted down on me. It's not in a self-watering container like this drama queen over here. This one, when it gets thirsty, it's been easier to tell when it needs a drink. It does what most plants do and it just gives you a very slight droop and you give it a drink, pops right back up. Instead of doing what a lot of spathophyllums do where they look totally fine and then just this <laughs> and you need to water them immediately to get them to pop back up. If they're being watered, probably every five days, depending on your humidity. I don't know what your house is like, but humidity, airflow, temperature, there are lots of things that are going to affect how quickly the soil dries out and the type of soil. That has a lot to do with it too. But generally once to twice a week is good enough for them if you're not putting them in a self-watering container. I will move this one into a self-watering pot at some point. I just, well, I need to get on top of ordering one. I don't have any that are quite large enough for this one. Like I said, it just makes life so much easier. You go from needing to water them once a week to maybe once a month. That's been the case with this one over here. This showed up as a teeny tiny little plant. I think these four right here were the originals that this one had on it when it showed up. This is a Spathophyllum Picasso. This one has my favorite variegation out of all the ones that I have so far because it has large splotches of white variegation. You get more of that stroke effect on there. When smaller, you get more of a streaky variegation, but as this matures, I am happy to see that I'm getting the nice big chunky variegation. Sometimes with the Picassos, as they get larger, you'll have a smattering of both. You'll have some foliage that has the nice big bands of white and sprays of white in the foliage combined with leaves that are more like the other one that I showed you where it's really, really streaky. I'm not a fan of the streaky, which is something that you can get more with the Jessica, I believe off the top of my head. I think that that's one that has really fun streaky variegation in it. I prefer the Picasso and I'm really looking forward to it growing some more so that there's more of that beautiful variegation to show on the plant. You can see there's various tones of white that fade out to a gray with the green. Instead of having that more monotone, just green and white streakage that you have in the more immature foliage. Got two leaves on there now that have that nice variegation. Looks like it's about to open up another one. That's another reason it took a while to film this video because I wanted to be able to show off the variegation on this one before talking about it so y'all could get an example of what that looks like. This is in a self-watering container. It's been low fuss, very easy to care for. Haven't done anything special for it other than making sure that there is water in the self-watering container. And it's easily doubled in size in the last month. I've also made sure that the water I put in there has a tiny bit of diluted fertilizer because it was just sent as basically a plug to make sure it was getting all the nutrients and nurturing it needed to start to root out so that the effect of being a self-watering container even had a point, right? Plants need some rootage on them for the self-watering container to do much. It needs to be able to reach the moisture zone in that potting soil. And that somewhat depends on what type of self-watering container you're using. This is just the kind with one little wicking cord in it. It's not immersed in anything. So that was why I wanted to Get it rooted out. Okay, I guess now we'll move on to the thirsty little drama queen over here. This right here is Spathophyllum silver streak. It's, isn't it beautiful? Typically the foliage is up like this. I don't mind it drooping down for the sake of the video though, because it makes it a lot easier to show you the top of the leaves. The streak has a lighter green leaf on it compared to just your regular Spathophyllum and a beautiful silver streak that runs down the middle of the leaf. That's that's basically it. I, there's not much else to say. It's just a cool looking spathophyllum. I suppose you could say that about all these other ones too. It's been more thirsty than some of my others, which I think is probably more just about the potting mix that it's in. This one more so than the platinum mist over there is one that I need to get into a self-watering container clearly because this is from, I, I missed one watering. I didn't even miss it. I was going to water it this morning because I had just watered it like three days ago. But clearly that's too long in between waterings. And I have this sitting where I keep it in the house right next to that platinum mist. So they're getting the same conditions. It's just apparently more thirsty. Also, maybe it's not as rooted out into its potting mix. That's a possibility too. Regardless, I'll be moving that into a self-watering container. This one, when they are fully flushed out and they're nice, big, full, floofy plants, they are really pretty, very eye-catching. It's an easy to grow plant with very attractive foliage. It just, right now, it doesn't, it doesn't look too hot. I have to take my word for it. Typically a beautiful plant. I highly recommend it. The streak that runs down the middle 
even though it's called Silver Streak, there's not anything metallic about it. To me, it's really, it's just white. I just see a white stripe in there. No metallic sheen to it like you might see on various Calatheas that have a somewhat similar appearance, or Stromanthes, I should say. Still, very nice, very pretty, thirsty, but quite lovely. And then, of course, there's the Domino. My Domino, it's been through some things. Really, both of these have, but more so the Domino. At some point, I don't know, a couple weeks ago, the water level dropped fairly low in here, which I, that's fine. I let that happen. I water plants, the water level goes down, I fill it back up. When that happened at one occasion, this got jammed underneath a basket over here, and then the pump was blasting on it, and I didn't notice it. And then I refilled the pond, and this was pinned down underneath there, so it was submerged, and the it was just it was underwater for a day or so, but that caused a lot of dieback on it. It was much more full than this. What I found interesting though, is that as it's regrown, it's giving me a whole new leaf, kind of a different leaf shape compared to before. This one's been out here for a couple of years, probably every four months or so, I throw an aquatic plant tab down there into the soil for it, give it some fertilizer. It's generally been a pretty sturdy plant. I'm not nuts about the variegation or the texture of the foliage on the domino. <laughs> you can see it's, it's still, it's, it's recovering. But the leaves that this is giving me now, it had some dieback and what's pushing out now, the new stuff, it's big. It's giving me nice big paddle-like leaves, which I really like. When it was smaller leaves, it was more full, but I wasn't crazy about the appearance. So hopefully it'll continue to <laughs> flush out and get full again but maintain those really big crispy leaves because I'm liking the crispy leaves on there. And then the last one is the variegated sensation. This one is the one that I was talking about that was in the back of the tank. It was just a tiny little plug when it showed up. I moved it into one of these floating planters out here in the pond. It has some water stainage on it. Some of the variegation is starting to come back. When I moved it out here, it's because it was losing its variegation. I was thinking that it was a lighting issue and I still think it probably was a lighting issue and size, you know, all those things can affect the variegation on them. The main thing I like about the sensation, whether it's variegated or not, is that it is big. This is a big chunky spathophyllum. This one is just a baby too. These will easily push three feet tall with huge paddle-like leaves on them. If they're variegated, then you're gonna have some pretty insane colors going on if you're lucky enough to get one of the ones that actually has a nice variegation on them. Typically, I think you're going to end up with something more like this, where you have various shades of greens, some yellows in there. Hopefully as it gets bigger, maybe there'll be some white. I don't know. It's still a baby. It's well over a foot tall, probably pushing 18 inches, but that's still a baby. Okay, so there we are, all caught up on the rabbit hole that I've fallen down with my spathophyllums. Comment down below, what are some of your favorite varieties? Ones I'm trying to get a hold of right now, I don't remember the names off the top of my head, but they're the more chartreuse green ones. There are two of them specifically. I have them on a wish list on my computer, ones I'm trying to keep my eyes out for. Have you grown the gold ones? Are they fun or do they behave well? Everybody's doing well, having a great day, a great life, and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.